Hey, so glad you joined me today. I'm Angie from Share Bright Light. I'm actually on the Carnival Glory seven day cruise. This is our second day. I'm in the ultraviolet game room right now. It's a great place to be. We've played a couple of games, a lot of fun. But being on this ship and uh, seeing all the waves made me think about the vastness of the ocean and that time in the Bible that Jesus actually, with his mouth, calmed the wind and the seas. Spectacular. disciples were greatly afraid that day. Sometimes we find ourselves afraid and worried that Jesus won't be there for us in the middle of our trials. Today we're going to talk about exactly that. What do we do in the midst of the storms of life when everything is caving in around us? What do we do? Just look at these waves and imagine, Jesus had been on a small boat preaching to the multitudes who were on land. And then later on in the day, Jesus said, told the disciples, come on, let's go to the other side. So they got in the boat and there were some other boats following them. Jesus, you know, got comfortable, laid his head on a pillow and went to sleep. All of a sudden it said a great storm arose and it started rocking the boat. And literally, I never realized it was this bad. Water started filling in the boat and the disciples got very afraid. They were afraid and they woke Jesus and said, Master, don't you even care? Don't you even care that we're perishing? That was an affront to Jesus and I never realized. I thought the whole point of this biblical narrative was that, you know, Jesus was there in the midst of our storms. He spoke to the wind. First, Jesus rebuked the wind. And then in Mark 4, it says that then he said to the sea, peace be still and immediately a calm settled on the waters. Then Jesus addressed the disciples. In the Old Testament, the Bible says he stilled the storm. He quieted the storm with his power. And the Old Testament also says he stilled the storm with his power. The waves of the sea were hushed. That was actually prophesying about Jesus, I believe. So yes, Jesus stopped the immediate danger, but then Jesus actually rebuked the disciples and he said, why is it that you're so upset? How can it be that you have no faith? Jesus acted like he was a little bit astonished that these disciples that had been following him this long still would get in that kind of fear, even in the midst of his presence. that should have, that you had shown your faithfulness and your ability to provide and for so long in your love and comfort to this person, and yet they still didn't trust you. How would that make you feel? Me personally, it would make me feel bad. It would. Like if I had been taking care of somebody and teaching them and, you know, feeding thousands of people in front of them and laying hands on them been showing somebody love and been providing for them and taking care of them and never failing them and then all of a sudden something like that happened and they just didn't trust me at all it made me feel bad it made me feel like maybe they really didn't believe in me at all they didn't even know who I was didn't know my character This video is about the winds and the waves, and it is very windy out here. Y'all don't know it, but I live in a lot of pain. I have an injured spinal cord. I've lost a child. Sometimes the thought comes to me, well, Jesus just 
just really doesn't care that much. Jesus doesn't really understand my pain. And then, you know what I have to do? I have to say, no, Angie. I know I cannot trust my own emotions. I cannot trust my own heart. I cannot trust my own thoughts. But I know one thing I can trust. I can trust that Bible. And see, I know that the Bible tells me that Jesus does not favor one human being over another. He doesn't have a respect for a person. He loves me as much as he loves Peter. He loves me as much as he loves Paul and John. He loves me. And so I depend on that word. And this is what he knows the bigger picture. I heard this thing one time that everything in our life is like, think of a puzzle, right? But pretend you didn't have the box and you couldn't see the completed picture. Every time you go through something in your life, that represents a piece of that puzzle. He knows the bigger picture. I heard this thing one time that everything in our life is like, think of a puzzle, right? But pretend you didn't have the box and you couldn't see the completed picture. Every time you go through something in your life, that represents a piece of that puzzle. So what do we do when we find ourselves in a situation where we don't believe? And Jesus asks us, how is it that you don't believe me? How is it that you have no faith? The Bible says that faith comes. You don't have it, you can get it. It comes by hearing. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you're in unbelief and you're worried, then go to the Bible where you can reaffirm yourself in the love of God, that He does care for you, that He is willing to be there and be strong for you, just like all this wind right here. And to calm the storm, and to calm the wind. Because the real song was, we're cool cats. We fight, we fuss. That's why you don't mess with us. Da dun 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 But see, we're Christians, right? We're holy squares. We're freaks. We're geeks. Yeah, those are That's why you can call us the Jesus freaks. Jesus freaks! Jesus freaks!